talk this morning about some superheroes. And I want to give you a little video clip and it lets you think, who's my favourite superhero? And I asked a couple of people earlier on, they said Spider-Man. Here comes that video clip coming up. Superheroes have been around for a long time. Today we're going to find out who your favourite superhero is. That would be Underdog. Because he always manages to find sweet Polly for bread. The Thing, the thing. was my favorite superhero because thing. I was always empathized with him because I always felt like he was so sad. The Wonder Twins, they used to like put their fingers together and go, Wonder Twin power, activate! Aquaman. The Flash, the fastest guy in the universe. Batman. Batman, why Batman? Uh, because he's behind the scenes, he's George Clooney. The Incredible Hulk. I'm Larry Boy because he's a vegetable and he saves the world at the same time. Mighty Mouse, because he had, uh, he was a great, he was small, but he had a lot of impact. Superman. 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 It's gotta be Wonder Woman. Definitely Batman. Yeah, it's Wonder Woman! It's the Dark Knight! Wonder Woman. She was a, uh, a very snappy dresser. She has a rope that she can throw at the villains and catch them really easily without walking them, chasing them. Wonder Woman. And because? Because when I was little, I had a pair of Wonder Woman unders, and they were so <laughs> and you know who my favorite superhero is? Who? Mr. Incredible, well, you left up the car! Mr. <laughs> Spider-Man, your favorite superhero? Spider-Man. Spider-Man? Spider-Man. Spider-Man, why? Because he's very flexible, can leap buildings. Because in real life he's like a nerd and he transforms to like this cool superhero. I, he's just like a mutant, he's not like normal. I just, I, I think that's cool. It just seems like he sacrifices um, living a normal life by being a superhero to help other people. I mean, he just always is out to help other people. There we go. I think Spider-Man won the day there, Wonder Woman. Um, <laughs> never turned John. Hey, uh, we're going to move from a video clip to a scripture reference on the screen. But you don't really need it on the screen because you know it so well. It's Psalm 110, verse 3. My people shall be on the uh, we launched this campaign last week and we heard God speak about where we would invest our time, how we would invest our time, our talents and our energies, our emphasis. Would it be following the pattern of Jesus Christ or would it be in pursuit of gold and glory and self-gratification? And we looked at a, a dinner party uh, uh, that, that's talked about in John's Gospel chapter 13 where normally at the door when you came in in that Middle Eastern setting, uh, there would be a servant boy there to wash your feet. Uh, he would be there because in those days your feet would be smelly because you wore sandals through the dusty streets uh, of the Middle East. And that dust was formed not only by the very soil itself, but by the droppings of the animals that walked down the streets all became part and parcel of the dust. And that would get between the toes uh, in those open sandals, and when you came to dinner, you didn't sit at a chair, on a chair at a table, but you reclined virtually with your feet in the face of your next door neighbor around the table while they ate <coughs> their roast lamb. And it, it wasn't a pretty picture, so uh, any well-to-do house would have the, uh, the servant boy to wash your feet when you came in, but on this particular occasion, uh, the servant guy wasn't there. He'd taken the day off, and there was no one there to wash the smelly feet. And so the, uh, uh, the disciples uh, who, who were there with Jesus, they kind of out endured one another. No one's washing any feet there. Uh, no one's wanting to do this inglorious, smelly, menial task. And they would rather sit down with smelly feet in the face of another and have smelly feet in their face than stoop down to wash one another's feet. And so Jesus himself took up the role of washing their dirty feet. And uh, unfortunately what happened uh, to apply this principle around the world, people started a whole new movement called the, the foot washing Baptists and all that sort of thing. This is not a call to have another ritual in the life of the church. That's, that's not what this is about. Uh, we don't need to do that washing of the feet, and I don't think we do. Everyone's got their clothes, shoes on, and, and we're not walking through those dusty streets. It's not part of our culture, we're not doing that. This is a call for Jesus' followers in all ages to volunteer to do the inglorious, menial, ordinary task with no thought of reward. I'll pray. Father in heaven, as 
we think about our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of heaven, the Son of God and God the Son, stooping down to wash the dirty, smelly feet of his disciples. And then saying, now that you've understood what I've done, you too do the inglorious, menial task with no thought of reward. You too do this. Bless the kingdom. Bless the planet. By doing the simple things. In Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 110, verse 3, my people shall be. Oh, <laughs> but this, this campaign is not just about the menial task. It is about doing that, about picking up a used coffee cup that someone's left lying around, helping the guy who's stacking the chairs or the tables after the service this morning. It, it is about that, but it's not just about that. Uh, it, it, it's about volunteering. And it's not just about volunteering on this campus, you know, to open, hold the gate open while the mum with the pram goes through to the children's community <coughs> centre. Maybe it's about also about doing something at the shopping centre. Maybe it's about stacking the trolleys that left lying around in the way of motorists. Well, maybe it's about picking up the discard of junk that's left around even at the shopping centre on the brick paving area, just putting it in the bin. Maybe someone would think you're a nerd, Spider-Man, for doing that. But maybe it's just about doing that. See, you don't need accountability or ministry or organisational structure uh, to commission you to pick up the discarded coffee cup or to hold the door open for someone or to help someone stack chairs. You see the need and you just do it. You, you don't need any commissioning for that. But there is another dimension to volunteer serving. God has gifted you and given you specific abilities for doing specific things. Listen to this, 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Let's all say it together. Common good. Let's do it again together. Common good. Common good. And then Paul lists a whole lot of different spiritual gifts in this passage here in 1 Corinthians 12 that God has given to people in the church. Everyone that's born again, everyone that's surrendered their life to Christ has a spiritual gift and these gifts are to meet all the needs that the church will have to one another and to the world. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, uh, but all its many parts form one body. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is part of it. So we all have a part to play and you will know what your part is when you discover what your gift is. You know what your gift is, you know what your... You are shaped for a purpose. You have been shaped for a purpose. And you know that those of you who have been coming along for a while, that we use the acronym SHAPE in this, in this church uh, to, to, to best understand how God has, has shaped you uh, for the best fit to serve Him in the life of His church. And that acronym S, uh, spiritual gifts, you get one. The moment you give your life to Christ, He gives you a spiritual gift. H is for heart. Your heart beats for something or other that someone else doesn't beat for. It just turns you on. It, 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 it makes you, it, makes, it lights you up. And for someone else, it just bores the heck out of them. But that's you. That's your heart. A is for abilities. Either you were born with them, and the moment you were born, you came out with an ability. Uh, that's, that's who you are. You're just wired that way. Or maybe you upskilled. You went and you, you trained in this, in this thing and you, you gained the skill, that ability. That's ability. A is ability. P is personality. <laughs> and we are all unique. When God made you, He threw away the mold and started again. And when God made you, he threw away that mold and made you, he threw Everyone, every person here, personality-wise, is unique. There are no two people the same. P is for personality. E is for experiences, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And God will use those in, 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 in shaping who you are. And, and you get to, to uh, serve his purposes according to your spiritual gifts, your heart, your abilities, your personality, and your experiences. So I just want to ask this morning by a raise of hands, how many of you either have done or are doing currently the SHAPE class? Well, the rest of you need to get in there and do it. That would be a good thing. So I just want to encourage you to do the SHAPE class. We're doing the final one this morning, is it, after service? There are just three sessions where 
Got one currently going, the third one this morning. Uh, those of you won't want to miss that. It's about 11 30 ish, am I right? We'll say 11 15 ish, but add 15 minutes for coffee, so 11 30 ish, or a bit. So I just want to encourage you to do the shape class. Three little sessions on Sunday mornings. Uh, that give you an understanding of your gifts, your abilities, and where you could best fit in the ministries of this church. And I want to just say we, we have four core ministries in this church, only four. Only four. Uh, we have worship, uh, we have children, uh, we have youth, and we have connect groups. And we have connect groups. Uh, now we have other ancillary and uh, supportive ministries that uh, will back those up, you know, but where, where our energies and our focus and our finance are going, read those four core ministries. That, that's where they're going. So whether you serve in a core ministry or in one of those support ministries is not the issue. The issue is, will you serve somewhere? Will you serve somewhere? Psalm 110 verse 3, my people shall be? Volunteer. God wrote that. 